Would everyone please stand for the posting of the colors, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, and military veterans, please feel free to salute the flag even if you're not in uniform. And once again, veterans, feel free to hand to their heart or salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you for standing. We would like to recognize support from the Daughters of the American Revolution and the Captain Thomas Tabor Chapter of American Colonial Danes, 17th century, for providing wreaths for our ceremony today. Thank you very much. At this time, let's give a warm welcome, warm welcome, warm welcome to the president of Muskegon Community College, Dr. John Selvin. Dr. Selvin. Thank you for that warm, warm, warm welcome. Anyway, welcome everybody to today's event. It's our veteran salute, uh, and, and thank you for coming. We have uh, been hosting this salute for some time now, many, many years, and it's our way of honoring those who have served. Honoring those who have served, and it's our special way to do that. Before I introduce our reflection speaker, I'd like to just introduce uh, two board members that are in the audience and, and one on stage here. But the two board members, our board chair, Dinah Osborne, would you wave for everybody? And our treasurer, Kathy Moore, would you wave? <laughs> and Trustee Fry is on stage here and she'll be introduced shortly. So, but in, in, in terms of offering a reflection, Nancy Fry, 
uh, MCC board, trustee, secretary, and U.S. Air Force veteran, and her husband, Huey, who is also a veteran, their commitment to serving the veterans is, is exemplified in their generous donation to create the Fry Veterans Student Emergency Fund. And that information details are out front there if you want to see more about that. But anyway, thanks to both the Fry's for that generous uh, donation. At this time, I'd just like to please welcome uh, Nancy Fry, who is going to offer a reflection. Thank you, Dr. Selma. Thank you, Jerry. Well, it's good to see you here. <laughs> you know, not everyone takes the time to remember veterans on Veterans Day, but you've done it today by being here. And for one, I'm appreciative of that, and I thank you. For a reflection, I started thinking about when did I first think that the salute was something important? And of course, on the front of your little paper, it does say, veterans, thank you, veterans, veterans, salute. I think it was when I was growing up in Muskegon on Smith Street between Wood and Pine, and there were two cemeteries at the end of the street, Oakwood and Greenwood. And I could see whenever there was a veteran that was going to have a service, uh, the family for the veteran, male or female, and that at that time, the cars would slowly go into one of the cemeteries. They'd have flags that flew on the car, and they would make their way to the grave where the person was going to be buried. And I'd always stand and watch. I was just a little girl. But since I was only over on the next street, I could always tell when something was going to be happening there. And I'd stand and watch them as they stood and went through the ceremony. And part of the ceremony, of course, was the salute. A salute is a sign of respect. And that's why it's so good that that is the title on the front of your paper, on the front of your little flyer. And then I'd wait to see what they were going to do next. I almost had it down by heart at this point because they would have a little music if they had someone to do that. And the family would gather around where the burial would take place. And there would be tears. You could see the people who were really close to whomever it was that was being buried. There would be a chaplain, and the chaplain would know just exactly what to say. And of course came the time when they would have the flag, and the flag would be presented to a family member. Could be a father, a mother, a family, other family member. And when they receive that flag, that's when the tears would flow. It's hard to say goodbye. It's hard to say goodbye to a veteran who has sacrificed part of their life to serve us, to serve all of us who are here today. And they're out there now, active duty and veterans. And in their mind, they still carry the memory of how they served, the people they served with, and what would happen from that day on without them. If you have a loved one that you had to say goodbye to, then you know what I'm talking about. So I say today to those veterans who are here, God bless you and thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for saying yes 
And even if you were drafted, you still had to say yes eventually. <laughs> How many of you were drafted? Well, there you go. <laughs> my brother was in the Vietnam War and he was drafted. My father was in the Navy. And family members right on down the line served our country and I am so very proud of them. Would you raise your hand if you are a veteran today so that we can all see you and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a salute means respect. And when you've seen the salutes that have taken place already for our flag and for our fellow members, fellow people who live in our communities, you know that respect counts big time. My son is standing in the back here. He loves it when I introduce him, but he, he is a veteran of the Army. So proud of you, Scott. Yes. <laughs> I say thank you to those who, the committee who put this together today, the time they put in to make sure that it would happen. And I can't say enough about thank you for being here. And I'll leave you with uh, God bless you and I salute you. Wonderful. As a young lady up in the front row here, just intrigued. 
like that. See her? She's what, six months old? Before I introduce the speaker, I would like to recognize Sean Cook, who is also here, the board member from MCC. Where's Sean? Where is Sean? Stand up, Sean. Come on, Sean. Won't stand up. His big wave? Red. Okay, our speakers today are Diana Owey and Lorraine Rodriguez. They are sisters, they are from Hesperia, and they are military veterans. Diana is an Air Force veteran, and while deployed, she served in support of the Operation Enduring Freedom. She is currently a student at MCC and will receive her associate degree in graphic design entrepreneur in May of 2024, next year. Lorraine is an Army, is an Army veteran and has been deployed twice in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. She is a former MCC student who earned two associate degrees in May of this, this year. One degree in, in bookkeeping services entrepreneur and one in graphic design entrepreneur. Please welcome U.S. military veterans Lorraine Rodriguez and Diana Howey. Come on down. Jerry, thank you for that introduction. I am Diana. And I am Lorraine. We would like to take this opportunity to say thank you for letting us speak here today. And we would especially like to thank all the veterans in attendance. Now we would like to let you know how service is community to us. I joined the Air Force to move around and see the world when I was 25 years old. I wanted to serve my country follow in our father's footsteps, who is also an Air Force veteran and an alumnus of Muskegon Community College. And I joined the Army to also move around and see the world when I was 32 years old. I wanted to serve my country, but not follow in the footsteps of our father, not in the Air Force anyway. <laughs> so I joined the Army. I had two kids who were 14 and 13 when I started basic training. They decided it would be a great idea for me to join the Army so they could go see the country. A memorable moment for me in the Air Force was when my squadron got tasked to help out to move the Berlin Wall. We got to move pieces of the Berlin Wall back to Ramston Air Force Base to be moved all over the world. Did you know that there's a piece of the Berlin Wall in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Gerald R. Ford Museum? If it wasn't for the Air Force, I would not have been involved in this monumentous event. A memorable moment for me when I was in the Army, because at least one of us joined the right branch of the military, <laughs> was being deployed. My, country was a, my company was attached to the infantry, and I, as a female, got to go on missions with them. I was a female searcher. I got to eat at the Houses of Sheiks, I got to meet lots of new people, and I got to see a lot of the country of Iraq that a lot of people didn't get to see. And I am grateful for the opportunities I was given in the Army. There are challenges in the Air Force. It is not for everyone. It is a big commitment. Like with any job, there are many dangers. In the military, it seems a little bit bigger because you don't really have your family you don't have your support system, and you have to rely on others sometimes you may not know very well. You can be away from your family for an extended period of time. You may be spending Thanksgiving and Christmas with an adopted family, or you could spend Christmas by yourself. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> you may not always agree with your chain of command, but you will do what they say, unless it's an unlawful order. There are also challenges in the Army. Speaking as a former drill sergeant, remember that basic training is just that, training. The drill sergeants are preparing you for something more. There's an, ex there's an extended period of time that you'll be away from your family. You won't have phones. You won't have internet. And sometimes, oh, sorry, you can't even talk on the phone or have the internet. 
The Army is very demanding, mentally and physically, and it also is not for everyone. There are benefits in the Air Force. For me, I became a more well-rounded person. Before I joined the military, I was not as outgoing. The Air Force instilled the values of service and com community t into me. It made me, it made my mission to help and serve others in my community when I could. I, it became, it may be helping others in our local food pantry or helping out with our veteran service group, peer support group. <laughs> I got to travel all over Europe, which I really enjoyed. The structure in the military was welcomed and necessary for me because as you know, I am not always a prompt person, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. The benefit for me in the Army was a sense of family. And some, it's something very different in the military. Civilians just don't understand it. We have an older sister, and she is constantly saying, what is this, the Lorraine and Diana show? Because we are always together, and we kind of have our own way of talking. She just doesn't understand it, and sometimes she feels left out. The closeness with my fellow soldiers and unit in Iraq is something that doesn't go away. Many of them I still keep in touch with. The Army also instilled the service and community into me, and by that I mean Diane and I do a lot with the American Legion. We go to our post meetings, we go to the state and national conventions, just so we can learn how to help and serve other veterans if they need it. We started a business making greeting cards called A Creation Design with Love. We give back to the communities through donations from the cards that we sell. We also give back to schools that let us use their logos to make congratulations cards for the graduating seniors. We have samples of our cards on the table back there, and you have feel free to look at them. That is why service is community to us. The Armed Forces Branch Anthems will now be performed by MCC College Singers and the MCC Wind Ensemble. When your branch is presented, please stand. Veterans, active duty members, and reservists of the United States Army, please stand for the Army Goes Rolling Along. Please stand for the Marines hymn. active duty members and reservists of the United States Navy, please stand for Anchors Away.
duty members and reservists of the United States Coast Guard, please stand for Semper Paradis. States Air Force, please stand for the U.S. Air Force. Thank you all, and thank you especially for the music, and especially for the veterans, and especially for their current active duty. That's why we're here to thank people, and thank you all. Thank you, you may be seated. That moment of silence, which was followed by the rifle salute and then a plane of taps, was in honor of all the American men and women in the armed forces. Who gave the ultimate sacrifice, your own lives in defense of our great nation. Now, would you all please join in and sing together the God Bless America, which is on the back of your program.
And now, please welcome the Provost and Chief Student Services Officer of Muskegon Community College. We're going to retire the color. <laughs> this is two years in a row I did that. <laughs> Officer Day, retire the color, please. Please welcome the Provost and Chief Student Services Officer of the Skating Community College, Dr. Kelly Connery. Thank you for joining us to honor United States veterans in our community, across the country, and throughout the world. We appreciate you and your time. We hope you continue to honor our veterans today and every day of the year through your recognition, understanding, compassion, and respect. On behalf of Muskegon Community College, we are grateful for the opportunity to host the annual Veterans Salute Ceremony and thank those who organized and participated in this event. We appreciate your ongoing support. That concludes our program. Please continue to salute. We're done. There's <laughs> snacks in the back if you want them. <laughs>